I got to tell you, I am the luckiest uncle on this planet. I am. I've been having conversations with my niece for decades. And 10 years ago, you know, some of the stories that we share in the family are 10 years ago, we would go to a Mexican restaurant, you know, six o'clock, have dinner, and then all of a sudden look around and the people there were mopping the floors. And they're like, uh, do you mind? We'd like to go ahead and close the restaurant for the evening. And we're like, what? What time is it? Oh, we've been talking for five hours. No problem. We're out of here. But that's happened on multiple occasions. And then I came across this amazing understanding. And although the the conversations haven't changed, there's just been a shift in the direction in which our conversations go. That's it. Nothing else has changed outside of the world, inside the restaurants. Nothing changes except our awareness of how our thinking works. That's what we're pointing in. That's the direction we're pointing in, is becoming aware of how our thinking works. Because we only ever experience our thinking at any given moment. Bottom line, we're only ever experiencing our thinking. And this conversation that we had yesterday, it was epic, off the charts. And the awareness, the awareness that naturally came through her, because we all have that, was breathtaking. And we both discussed an event that has happened in our lives separately. She had an event that was tragic, and I had an, an event that was tragic. And we discussed how this worked, how our life moved on, how we didn't have any say-so. Life just moves us along. And it's beautiful to recognize and witness it. And in her awareness, she had said that this, this event had taken place. And then she experienced the thoughts of that event. But the event already took place. The event was over. But then in her experience of her thinking about the event, that's where, that's where the suffering took place. And it was so beautiful to see how she recognized that. It wasn't the event itself. It was the thoughts that showed up around the events. And as she moved through life gracefully, her friends were like, hey, how in the world did you immediately go back to work? How did you go right back into doing what you love to do? You know, how is that possible? And she said that, you know, although life came right back into place and I did the things that are typical or normal, it's like you, you still work, <laughs> you, you still barbecue vegetables, you still hang out with your friends. That happens naturally. That's not anything. It's not like the event has shifted the world and, and cracked the earth. It's just an event that happened. We experience our thinking around it. And then, but life moves on. And, and her friends were saying how strange that was. And she was saying that for her, what showed up for her was an insight, an insight that came in and said, hey, why don't you take a minute? Now, if that's a metaphor, let's take a look at that metaphor really quick. Something showed up within her that said, why don't you take a minute? And that to me is incredible. It's, it's beautiful. It's a pause. It's the space between our thinking. And in that space between thinking, something arose for her and said, hey, why don't you just take a minute? Now, that minute is not literal. It's not saying you take one minute. That, that minute could be seconds. It could be minutes. It could be hours. It could be days, weeks, months, whatever the case may be. We don't know. But the wisdom through her showed up and said, just let's just pause. Let's pause. Just slow down for a second and pause. Because what happens naturally for us is an event takes place. Our mind gets all wound up and just starts wanting to analyze every little detail. We want to go back into the past and analyze every little thing and dissect it, and then analyze each dissection, and then dissect that dissection, and then blah, 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 and just keep breaking it down until you're just in a, a swarm of hornets in your head. And in that swarm is where we think that it's going to be like that forever. Hence, our immediate feelings of going to get therapy because we believe innocently that this is going to last forever. But in her awareness, she recognized that when she just paused, just took a minute, there was a breath, there was an immediate breath. Ah, <sighs> okay, all right. Thinking happens. Thinking 
is part of our just part of our natural programming. It's it's something that shows up, but it's a thought that shows up amongst thousands of thousands of other thoughts. Why would one thought have so much more energy than another thought? And when I work with clients, what's amazing for me is to have them tell me the story that's that they're having troubles with or the problem that they're having. And they discuss they discuss the thought that seems to have all the energy in it. They don't discuss anything else, just that one thought. That's a whole story, a story of the past, the mistakes they made, all the things that they had to live through, and so on. And what's fascinating about listening to someone and watching watching them especially is to see how, as they're telling the story, that space shows up between their thoughts and they settle even for a brief moment. In fact, they may even laugh. They'll even laugh about what they're speaking about. And then they move on. They move on to the next story or they, they go back to that same thought again and they experience the suffering. What they don't typically see, in fact, I would say 99% of the people don't see this, is in that those moments where the space shows up that they laugh, they giggle, they chuckle, they snicker, whatever. There's just a moment. They smile. They smile. Just after they're coming out of the story, they laugh. And when I asked them about that later on, when I asked them, do you know how many times that you laugh during our conversation? And they're like, what are you talking about? And I'll say, well, I didn't count them all, but I'm going to guess 73 times in our one hour conversation. And they're like, no way, no way. And I'm like, well, that's why I record them and give them back to you. Because that way you can see for yourself that our thinking flows through us like a river. And when we grab one of those thoughts, and instead of it flowing down the river, we grab it, hold on to it, and want to analyze it and dissect it. And then that one story becomes the problems that we've had our entire lives. It's like, what if that's not true? What if that's an experience that you're having? You share the experience. You experience the thought that's happening. And then it moves on. It moves on because there's other thoughts waiting in line. There's more thoughts waiting in line. And in her awareness of our epic conversation, did I tell you how lucky I am? I mean, these are these are conversations that I can't even imagine having these with these people that we think are so much higher intelligence than we are, the gurus and the sages and the oracles. We are enlightened intelligence. We have that. We always have. We've always been the greatest, amazing energy of intelligence. Always. We are the essence of life itself. And we have a brain. And that brain, its job is to produce thoughts by the hundreds of thousands, maybe even numbers that we can't even imagine. And having this understanding and knowing how we're just experiencing life moment to moment to moment, it's breathtaking. It opens up space for everything, for infinite possibilities. And again, going back to her innate awareness that just said, hey, let's just let's just take one minute, whatever that means. And she found something in there. She found something that was an awakening for her. And as we discussed more and more and talked about other s- situations and other relationships, she could see that flow flowing through. And it was just amazing. It's amazing to experience these conversations. And I highly recommend if you're suffering in any form or fashion and that you feel that that suffering has changed your life and that you are unable to get past that suffering and that you feel that you're trapped in some way or stuck in some way and that there isn't a way out. And I can tell you that that isn't, the, that isn't the truth. I can tell you that that isn't the truth because of simple conversations. Nothing else is needed. There's no paperwork. There's no worksheets. There's no meditation. Not that there's anything wrong with meditation, but it's not necessary to understand how our thinking works. We grow up as babies. We learn about gravity, but no one taught us that. We learn it as soon as we start to stand up. No one explained to us what gravity was. But here with this understanding, nobody taught us this understanding in school either. We learned about higher consciousness, but we weren't told that we are higher consciousness. We were told that we need to 
strive and seek and search for our well-being. And then out of all that searching and seeking, we will finally find what we're looking for outside of us, out there. And the truth is that behind our eyes, not looking outward, but looking inward and just being one with ourselves, because that's all we get. We are the universe of ourselves. We are our world. And experiencing the conversation last night was amazing. Epic. Again, epic. I hope they still use that word, but it was incredible. And the best part about it was the text message I got the next day, today, that said, hey, thank you so much for an amazing conversation. And this is a two-way street. The beautiful thing about listening and paying attention and really getting into what that person is saying and listening carefully for their wisdom and clarity, because it shows up in them every single time, because we are that wisdom and clarity. So through our suffering, wisdom and clarity is right there. It's always been there. My job as a teacher, a coach, a person who has taken this understanding and really, really worked at seeing how beautiful and amazing this is. You see this wisdom and clarity in other people, and it's just a matter of time. They express their wisdom and clarity, and it's right there in front of your face. And all you have to do is hold on to it and then hand it back to them. And they resonate with it so deeply. Why do they resonate so deeply with it? Because it came from them. We are that wisdom and clarity. And we have a mind that thinks. I'm saying that we're beyond the thinking that we resonate deeply with our wisdom and clarity that shows up through us, not our dissecting brain. If you'd like to learn more about this, if you have time, one hour conversation with me for free, no obligation. The links are in the description below. Go to my website, click on the link to schedule a conversation and let's have a conversation and see where it leads us. You are the wisdom and clarity. My niece is proof that just through conversations and without anything else changing, life shifts in a new direction. And that awareness of how our thinking works is beyond imaginable. And we didn't have to do anything about it. Just talk about it. There was a part in our conversation where she said, you know what? I'm learning to trust myself. Trust. She didn't say innate intelligence. But she said to trust herself. And that is so, so powerful. We are bombarded by things outside of us. We're bombarded by marketing and we're bombarded by friends and families of how our lives should be and how it should look. And, and even Western therapies will somehow tell us that these experiences that we're having are going to last forever. And it's like, no, that's not truth. The truth is that you're going to find your truth within yourself and that it has nothing to do with anything outside of us or anyone outside of us. And when she started to feel into that moment of trusting herself, things shifted for her, but without the world outside of her having to shift. Within herself, there was an awareness. And she even said, I know this sounds cheesy, but I feel like it was a self-awareness. And I'm like, it's amazing that our thinking would say that it's cheesy, but it's one of the greatest things, the greatest experiences a, an individual can ever have in their life is self-awareness. And our conversation continued and we moved in different stories and we moved back and forth and we kept seeing that flow in life. And it became instantly apparent that we're grounded in our self-awareness, and then moments where we're not grounded, and then back to being grounded again, and then not being grounded. It's this beautiful cycle. It's amazing to witness it in another person, especially someone so dear, so dear, and so incredible, so loving. It was amazing conversation. And to see it in another person, in another human being, and to see it in my clients is the greatest gift ever. So please, if you find yourself suffering continuously, reach out. 
talk to someone, talk to anyone, but definitely talk to someone and, and listen to yourself because there's an awareness about yourself that's the most important thing ever. Thank you so much for taking the time out to watch and listen to this conversation. I think you're amazing because I know that you're amazing. Take care of yourself. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.